Hi, welcome to the channel. Thanks for clicking on the video. Um, we're out in the South Wales in the Brecon Beacons tonight and we are doing the third of my uh, 999 little tent series. So obviously I pitched it on a local hill in nice sunny weather, just have a good look around it and see what it was like and see what the space was like inside. Second video I did, I pitched it um, late afternoon, um, heavy rain into the evening, rain most of the night to see if it was waterproof. It survived the first three hours of heavy rain really well without a drop inside. But the next morning there was some slight water on um, the two sides, uh, right from this little seal here um, where the peg comes out. There's two little pinholes either side where it's not been seam sealed, so that's where the water was coming through. And one on the corner as well, so it might just be where it's been stretched a little bit. Um, so this is a, an overnight test to see, <laughs> to see how it fares in a bit of wind. The winds are between 25 and sort of 30 mile an hour gust tonight. Um, but obviously you can see from my background that I'm in a bit of a sheltered spot. So I'm on Cadafar, which I've been here before, the Van Gogh summit, um, pitched slightly higher up then. So about 482 meters is the, is the high point behind me. Um, so I've just dropped down a bit and the wind down here is not too bad. I'll, I'll get the wind measuring thing out in a minute and, and have a quick look at, at what that says. Um, tent was a nightmare to pitch. <laughs> I'll show you that on a, on a quick time lapse. Just really awkward. The door is just so small in this tent. It, it's just really hard to actually get in and actually just get those that um, A-frame in the front there. Uh, and then obviously once I was trying to get the main pole in as well, it's just blown all over the place. But now it's pegged down. It is. It is really solid. It is a really solid tent. Um, the only slightly dubious thing is some of the back pegs aren't in at all well. And um, the ground is really, really rocky here. If I get a bit worried about them coming out too much, I've got some titanium stakes in my bag, which I will hammer in and, and fix those properly. But I'll try and have a quick play with those pegs and see if I can get them in a bit better anyway. I'd, I'd rather just use what came with a tent if I can get away with it. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes overnight. Obviously a lot of comments saying it's just gonna be an absolute nightmare of condensation. A lot of people saying it's just a tent suitable for festivals, you wouldn't want to take it out. But interestingly, there's been a couple of actual people who own this tent, uh, and one of them has taken it up to the beacons a couple of times and said it sheds the wind really well and it's actually quite usable out and about. Um, so a couple of people have commented that they actually own the tent and, and, and they use it. One person uses it with a tarp as well. So huge thanks for everyone who's engaged uh, in the comments. Huge thanks to everyone who's viewed the videos and subscribed. Um, seeing massive, massive growth, thanks largely in part to this tent. Um, but obviously this is the absolute budget end of, of, of what I'm doing here. I've got a few more tents coming up in the 20 to 25 pound mark, which are really good tents, which are absolutely made to be um, up in the mountains and all that kind of stuff. So loads of, comment, loads of content coming up. Um, so do subscribe. We're, we're getting close to a thousand subscribers now, which is absolutely fantastic um, and plenty of views as well. So I'm gonna keep hunting for the bargain. So tonight's setup is my 999 tent, my 20 pound uh, backpack, my 28 pound sleeping bag, my 12 pound sleep mat and my eight pound um, pillow. So I think that takes us to 78 pounds. So it's my cheapest setup yet thanks in largely in part to the fact that the tent's only 10 pounds. Um, but obviously I've got a 20 pound tent, which is really, really good, which I um, I might put out either before this video or after this video, I'm not quite sure yet. Anyway, I'm gonna kick back and have a cider and chill out. And there's a bit of rain in the air as well. There was a few spots on the walk up. So I don't know if it is gonna rain tonight. They, they give the chance to the old shower. You can see some pretty dark clouds behind me. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna chill out. Um, and yeah, we'll catch up over the course of the night, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not too far from the car, so if it all goes wrong and the central pole snaps, because it is quite a twisty, bendy pole, then I'll just have to dash back to the car. I was really tempted to take a second tent out tonight. I was going to take my um, my Jack Wolfskin Gosman 1 out and just sort of pitch it nearby just in case, but I thought, you know what, it's not far to the car. I've got a good head torch. I've got plenty of warm clothes and waterproofs and stuff. I'll just get back to the car and go home if it all goes wrong. Um, but no, I've got every faith in this little tent. It, uh, it's a, it's a masterpiece and uh, who knows, maybe I'll treat it to an upgraded aluminium pole and, and I'll pimp this tent. Anyway, I'll uh, stop right then on now um, and I will catch up with you if anything goes wrong.
So I'm inside the tent. Now, I like little stuff. I like their food. I love the middle aisle. It's always good fun to walk in and get a, a sandwich and a chainsaw. But how they can describe this as a two-person tent, <laughs> I really don't know. I mean... Yeah, I mean, technically you can get two people lying in this tent, but there's absolutely no room to do anything if there's two of you in here. Um, right now, I've got myself and my bag in here, and already I feel like I'm going to be touching the side wall of this tent all the time because it's hard to sleep in the middle and get your backpack anywhere because it can't go where your feet are because there's not really much room, and it can't go where your head is because there's really not much room. Um, so yeah, it's, it's absolutely not a two-man tent, plenty of space for one person and gear but you're still going to be in danger of constantly touching the uh, the side walls which is obviously a problem in a single skin tent because you're going to get condensation or if you've got rain you don't want to be touching the outside tent and helping that seep through but not expecting too much rain tonight the tent's moving around a little bit in in the breeze here but it's not very much we're talking between sort of five and twelve miles an hour in the showered spot maybe the occasional gust getting slightly higher than that but um, it's not not bad at all. So yeah, it's starting to spit with rain, which is why I come inside. It's also about half nine, I think, and it's been a really long week. I'm absolutely knackered. I made the mistake of um, talking to my colleagues about how well the baby had been sleeping. Then last night she decided to not sleep in her own cot. I uh, was in bed with us and then decided to wake up at half past four this morning. So really pretty tiring week this week all in. Um, <laughs> and the wind's getting up quite a lot. So yeah, I'm just going to chill out and put a podcast on and um, yeah, try try and uh, move around, tidy my stuff up and get into my sleeping bag, I think, because it's, it's a little bit chilly up here tonight. Well, it's uh, 2 a.m. and it's really quite windy. So um, yeah, I'm not 100% I'm not confident in this tent, I'll be honest. It seems to be doing pretty well, but um, there are some real gusts hitting it from different directions at the moment. Whilst I thought I was in a reasonably sheltered spot, I think it's obviously coming off the side of the hill and round the side, and it's kind of hitting the tent on the side a bit as well. So I can totally get why people buy expensive tents and camp in the Hilleberg solo and stuff, because you know, you want that feeling of absolute security when you're out camping. It's why I love the first video I made in this channel was what I think is one of the best budget tents around is the Nordis Falbard 1. And I got the PU version, which is online now for £134. And that's wind tested up to 90 miles an hour. And if I was in that tent now, I'd probably be asleep and feeling absolutely secure because this is absolutely nothing for that tent. Um, but being in this little tent, <laughs> it cost me a tenner. Um, it's hard to relax in the same way. Um, things always seem a lot worse when it's dark as well. And because it's single skin, you really feel <laughs> every movement of the tent. And uh, I've had to zip up the door a bit because it was just getting quite cold in here. There was so much airflow. Um, had the, the front door completely open with just the mesh, um, keeping bugs out. And it was, yeah, really quite cold. So I've zipped that most of the way up now. There's no condensation to speak of at the moment. So, um, you know, that's, that's one good thing about the wind is, is, is stopping the condensation from forming has rained a little bit as well, um, but uh, obviously not anywhere near enough to start uh, soaking into the tent. Um, but yeah, so far, fingers crossed it's doing okay, but uh, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about the uh, the buffeting that the tent is taking at the moment. Um, I've checked the forecast. They don't give it getting any worse than this. They don't give it getting much better either. They give it sort of fairly consistent all the way through tomorrow so um, I'm hoping it won't get any worse than this and uh, I'm going to really try my best to get some sleep because I'm absolutely knackered. Well here we are in the morning after. The tent has survived and um, 
it survived some pretty heavy rain showers, some quite consistent wind, which you can still probably hear is, uh, is batter in the tent. Got a little bit of condensation inside. That's because I tried for the first sort of half of the night to sleep with the door fully open in terms of just having the mesh on, which got really good airflow, but I was getting, getting quite cold. So I whacked my down jacket on and zipped up the door by 80%. Slept, <laughs> slept really well then, um, but I knew I'd get a bit more condensation. So there, there definitely is some, um, but I've certainly had a lot worse in my um, Lanshan 2 Pro, this, that single skin trekking pole tent. Uh, and that's a much, much bigger tent that's got much, much more mesh than this one as well. So no, I can't say it's, it's, it's that bad at all for that. Um, Obviously, as I said during the night, slightly nervous about the wind and just how much it was battering it from the sides at times. I can definitely see why when you're out and about like this, especially if you were in the middle of nowhere, you want a good tent. You want a tent that you, you're really confident in and so you can sort of rest easy lying there if the weather turns bad. Um, not something I was <laughs> entirely comfortable with last night when I was in this tent. But you know what? It's done absolutely fine. So yeah, it's it's passed its tests with uh, with flying colours. I'd say it's definitely a really usable one man tent. Due to its really good design, it can take a bit of weather. As you can hear again now, it's 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 definitely getting pulled this way and that, but the, the A-frame design at the front is really solid. When you get it pitched, you can just grab, your ha grab it by your hand and, and you can really feel just how little movement there is. Um, but the sleek design, if you get it pitched right with the wind being consistent, the problem last night is the wind just wasn't cons consistent at all. Maybe because of where I'm pitched, it's kind of, it's going over the hill and then swirling around the side a bit. Um, and it's proven a bit more challenging, but no, it's a, it's a really solid little tent. And um, yeah, if you see one used for, for very little money, then don't hesitate to grab one. It is a gray, and cold start to the day. It does not feel remotely like summer, remotely like June today. Um, it's really quite windy still. Um, tents dried out pretty much outside and inside. Not too much condensation inside at all once I got moving around, very little to be honest. Um, so it's done pretty well, but obviously it's quite a strong breeze last night, so that really helped it. If I kept the mesh door open all night, probably would have avoided almost any condensation, but it was just too cold. Um, I only had my, obviously, my cheap sleeping bag with me, so I had to put some layers on just to stay warm. Camera's almost blowing over, just to show you how, uh, how bad the wind is. So I'm gonna <laughs> wrap this up before it does blow over. Um, I could definitely have pegged it out better if the ground hadn't been so rocky. I could have definitely got the tent much taller, which would have helped keep the sides away from me when I was sleeping. But no, a 999 tent, I think it's done really well. So if this is your kind of content, you like bargain tents and stuff, I am definitely someone you should be subscribing to. So hit that subscribe button, it takes two seconds, it's absolutely free. And it takes another second to drop me a like. So I've got lots of videos coming up. Um, I've got some really, really good used tents, uh, bargains. I've got a brand new tent that was extremely cheap as well, which I'm gonna be doing some reviews of. So yeah, hit subscribe, drop me a like, and a big thanks to everyone who's done so far. And I'll catch you in the next one.